Everybody's got a story. I've got a story. You've got a story. Where's God in your story? We're going to find out more about that. This is Hope Today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Sydney Goldman and Amy Schaefer. We've got God stories. God stories. It is so, I mean, we read the Bible and we love to read the stories of faith, the stories of Esther and Ruth and Sarah and Abraham. Well, today, not that I'm in that category. <laughs> All right, yes, all right. I, I am Amy not in that category, but I do have a little <laughs> tiny story that has God all through it. So I'm excited to share it with you, Just a minute. Abraham. Let me, let, me see if, let me see if you're in here somewhere. Yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, Amy. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I, there's like definitely traits of like the women that you mentioned in the Bible that you do have this quality. So we're just like super excited for Amy to share her story and just even her journey. So I think there's something we all can glean and we can learn when we hear your story. So we're super excited. <laughs> I know, and I loved hearing Tom's story. I love hearing Sydney's story because it, it kind of puts pieces of the puzzle together. And you're going, oh, you know, we sit and talk every day with people. And, and really, you are like family to us. And we feel like we know you. You feel like you know us. And so when you hear a piece of the story, you're like, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're doing that today. So it'll be great. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, uh, as I said at the open, you've got a story too. And if you uh, have something you want to praise God for, maybe you have a prayer request, you can always call our prayer partners. They're always there standing by. Uh, the number's there on your screen and uh, they'll pray with you. But I'll tell you what, if you've got a praise report, we'd love to hear that too. We'd love to hear the good things that God's doing. So give us a call and let us know all that God's up to in your life. Yeah, so I think, Amy, without further ado, we would love for you to just share and take us through how God has walked with you step by step. So, Amy, tell us your God story. Yeah, I, I'm really excited. You know, uh, over a month ago, I was sitting in a group in a book club. They didn't know me. I don't know them. And but we're coming together to talk about this book that we were reading. And they asked me, they said, Amy, how did you meet Buck? And how did you end up in Pittsburgh? So I thought, maybe you might want to know how I met Buck and how I ended up in Pittsburgh because when I look back at every intricate detail, God was all in my story. You see, my parents raised me up in a church. I was born and raised in church. I can count maybe on two hands in the 20 years I lived with them how many times we missed church. It was not an option. You show up at church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and whenever else. And that was our priority. So I had a deep, deep love for God's house. So I'm in college. And I mean, I just, I was like, God, what do you want me to do? I, and you know, you're just trying to create your life in your head, you know. And you're like, well, I love acting. I love singing. I love dancing. Um, I'm going to be a musical theater major at Oklahoma City University. My voice teacher, Florence Birdwell, 90% uh, of her students went to Broadway. I, I was living the life. I mean, I, life was good. I didn't need to change anything. So I'm at my home church, Crossroads Cathedral in Oklahoma City, and it is the Easter production. And I'm standing behind the curtain. And here's a little clip of when I was Mary Magdalene in this Me. drama. There is power in his presence. There is such power in his touch and in his words. And there is power in his name. The crowds had lined the narrow street to see this man. Just a carpenter, some say. So I'm behind this huge, I know, I have a little girl. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> boy, those were the days. This huge curtain, I'm standing behind it. I'm getting ready to go out. There's the church seat, 5,500 people. It's packed. It's our Easter drama. I'm standing behind the curtain, and I heard the voice of the Lord say to me so clear. I want you to go to Ramah and you will minister to thousands. And so I do the drama, I get done. I've never heard of Ramah. So I go to a couple of older ladies in the church, Gladys Luno, and I said, Gladys, 
where is Raymond? She said, that is Kenneth Hagin. That is a Bible school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I said, the Lord told me to go to Rhema. And she said, well, that is the most wonderful ministry. You know, it's just an hour and a half away. I get in the car and on the radio, you know, I'm listening to Christian radio. Yeah. And this guy comes on. He says, hey, I, I find apartments for Rhema students. And I went, oh, my gosh, I, I got his number down. I go home and I tell my parents, God has told me to go to Ramus. So that was Easter of 1993. By the fall, I was enrolled at Ramah Bible School. Now, my last name, my maiden name was Alan. So I was always at the first in line, the first in class. And I ended up sitting by the S's. I don't know how, but God. And so I'm sitting next to Kevin Schaefer and Mark Schaefer, who are my husband's, but his brother's. And I'm singing in the choir with a lady named Keely Schaefer, who ended up being my sister-in-law. Kevin and Mark and Keely are like, you've got to meet our brother. You've got to meet our brother. And I thought, oh, my gosh. You know, because they did call it at times Rama Bridal Training Center. And I was like, take a number. Listen, when you're in Bible school and you can <laughs> sing, it's like, take a number. Because the guys at that time, that's the only thing they were looking for. I need a girl that can sing. So Buck's brothers and sisters had a big setup. They invited me over for dinner and they said, Buck, make sure you call. So he called me and when I picked up the phone, I said, hi, this is Amy. And he said, I'm going to marry you. First thing he said. And I said, I'm going to marry you. And I knew that he was going to be my husband. Now, before you freak out, we did date two years before we got married. And we proved out the will of God. But in December of 1995, we got married. So now we are this young couple just full of vision and ministry. And we loved God. And we just wanted to preach and sing all over the world. And so we did. We traveled for one full year in ministry. We were all over the United States. We were all over Europe. I mean, we would spend a month in England, Scotland, and we'd be in Germany, and we'd be in uh, all over England, if I said that. Um, and so we, we got home, and we we're trying to make plans up in our head. What seems right? And we thought, Vienna, Austria. 100%. I mean, Vienna, Austria. It had this big, amazing Bible school, and they needed a church, and they needed pastors. We're like, sign me up, Jesus, Vienna, Austria. So he's in the room, and he's writing the newsletter to all of our partners out there. And man, I'm in the other side of the house. He's in the office. I knew we were not going to move to Vienna, Austria, because God said to me, Pittsburgh. So Buck comes in the room and he's, his face is in agony. There's papers all over the floor. He was type. You know, this is in the old days where he had to type and, you know, on the computer and print. And he said, Amy, we're not going to Vienna, Austria. I said, I know. God called us to go to Pittsburgh. So we packed up a U-Haul and headed to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Pioneer Church we had no clue how to start, what we were doing. There were not systems or structures or lessons or anything on how to plant a church. And here I was moving from the Midwest to the Northeast. The culture is different. And it is amazing in our God story, guys, how God had set us up to pioneer this church. Every need was met. We, were, we went to my home church. A lady came up with a wad of $100 bills, thousands of dollars. She said, this is about to pay for the move you're about to make. We're sitting in a meeting with Kenneth Hagin. He said, you're right here. You're an evangelist. God has called you to pastor. Go. And where God guides, God provides. And my parents said, Buck and Amy, go and do the will of God for your life. So here's a picture of Buck and I when we first got here. We're on Mount Washington. I mean, look at that. I mean, the Buck pleated. Has hair. Buck Buck's has hair. hair. I mean, that is it. And, and guess what? 27 years later, we're still wow. here. Awesome. We're still building the kingdom. 
we're still building the church. And so we pioneered Grace Life Church in Easter. Isn't that interesting? It was the same timing that God had called us. Not planned at all by me, but God knows. We planted the church in 1997. God has been faithful throughout all of these years, all of these decades, the nine buildings that we were in, the staff and the leadership and the people. We are still planted. We are still flourishing. And guys, this really has every thing to do with um, my, my life scripture. Those planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. So I brought a picture of our East Campus. And that's the North Campus and the East Campus. And it's just amazing what God will do with your life, with your story. And I do believe that those planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. You know, so I wonder today in your story, maybe you're searching for significance and purpose everywhere else, but maybe, just maybe like Jesus did, you know, they said of Jesus that as was his custom. He goes to the house of the Lord. He went to the temple. Where was Jesus? They found him in the temple. So I'm wondering if the purposes of God, the plans of God, hearing from God, there's something about being in God's house with God's people, with God's word being taught in the worship of God, being a part of a body, being connected to the body of Christ, that God wants to speak to you and move in your life like never before. So I don't know, did you guys know that? Any of that about me and my story? I, I didn't know about uh, Vienna. Asha, I thought maybe you wanted to, you know, the hills are alive with the sound of music. It would go. 100%, 100%. <laughs> you, still, you still have hills here though, right? I mean, yeah. you've got hills, so, uh, but tell me about like, I wasn't, when you started planning this church, I remember you guys showed up here. You were answering phones on the prayer line for, yeah. for a while there. Uh, God brought you through uh, to where, I mean, it's such a tremendous success now, but it was a process. Well, the whole, I mean, that that's just like a touch of my story. Uh, there's a whole other story about pioneering the church, the trials, the struggles, the losses, the, the buildings that fell through, the people that let, I mean, it, it's like, and, and it's weird because you're right. We were always connected to here at Cornerstone Television. We did at, we, I mean, we just thought whatever we have, whatever we can do, we want to help build the kingdom, whether it's ministry. And, you know, even at Crossroads at my home church, uh, I was always on TBN, Trinity Broadcasting. Mm -hmm. I would sing, you know, in the shows. Any of the guest speakers would come. We would have T.D. Jakes, R.W. Shambach, you know, John Hagee, Rod Parsley. I mean, and I would sing before they would preach. You know, these Sandy Patty songs. Oh, <laughs> and lift the roof off the place, you know. And um, so when we came here, not serving in and helping in any ministry was not an option. Mm -hmm. So we would answer the phones here and pray. And then our worship team right. was yeah. always very solid. I mean, it's amazing because I came here and we had just nothing, just absolutely nothing. And you know, you're just building and you're gathering teams and you're, you're learning. And we would come and play here often as a young team. You know, we'd have 10, eight people on set leading worship and doing the telethons and, and then one day is when it all shifted for me concerning tele, you know, Christian Cornerstone Television. And I was preaching at the movie theater. Buck was in Oklahoma and it's our Easter Sunday. Again, Easter. And he had a video going of his Easter service. A guy in a wheelchair backed up and the cord that powered everything, the lights, the sound, the video, got wound up in his wheel and it ripped out of the wall. Wow. And so I had papers, I had his sermon notes in front of me and I was like, this is not happening, this is not happening, this is not happening, because I really just want to be on the background. I just want to help, I don't want to 
preach. I don't want to step out there and teach. When the lights came on, I was up there with his notes and I finished out Easter Sunday. I will never forget that day. And it was because of that, you know, I started preaching every other weekend, once or twice a month. I'm preaching again this weekend at church when my husband is on a mission trip. And um, it was in one of those services, uh, an executive producer here said, you know what, she would be really good on television. And he said, will you come? And they're, they're doing this whole sister thing and they're doing some things for real life. And I mean, it wasn't but a couple of months and I was on the sisters, which we're now celebrating our 10th anniversary of sister to sister. That, that is amazing. I mean, really, I feel like we've grown up together in many ways, you know, just grown through so much hardship, so much good things, so much trials. But through it all, God is so faithful. Real life, it was every day. We would do, we'd film two hours every day, you know, here. And then now on Hope Today, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful God story. But truly, those planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. So I wonder, you know, if you're not flourishing, are you planted in the house? Because I know God's plan, God's will, God's purpose is that we do flourish in life. And Sydney, you know, really it's flourishing in the hard times yeah. as well as flourishing in the good times. It's in the dry seasons. It's in the hard seasons. It is flourishing. And you know, I just want to say, it just is such an honor just to hear your story and to see how you have flourished so much. And we know that the best is yet to come and there's so much. And just thank you for just sharing. Even that moment just really sticks out to me when you were talking about being behind the curtain and you're singing. And I never heard, like, I, we've heard her sing sometimes on set, like, but I haven't, just to hear how, like, that bravado and just, like, your voice is so beautiful. And it's, um, you don't hear it sometimes, but we hear, like, Amy will be singing. But just in that moment, that your step of obedience of just saying, okay, God, I'm going to pursue you and I'm laying down this dream of wanting to be on Broadway to literally share the gospel. That's truly incredible. And to see the great stages and the places that he's put you to preach the gospel. So I just want to say it is an honor to have yes. you with us. It is an honor for what you share and what you deposit, the joy and the hope of the Lord every single Thank day. You. That's what we do. That's who we are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to dive into our 21 days of prayer and we're going to talk about the matters of the heart. We'll be right back. Every now and then life gets the best of us and we need a reminder to keep calm and trust God. Simple but striking, the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings provides messages of reassurance to help carry you through tough and challenging times. These small cards fit into the palm of your hand and will turn your focus to the one who is in control of everything. Inside, you'll find 51 colorful double-sided cards featuring a combination of inspirational scripture verses and faith-based quotes. Add it to a get well basket or use it to encourage a teacher, family member, or friend. Or save it for the times you need encouragement. Be sure to ask for the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings when you give today. It's our way of saying thanks as you encourage others by providing life-changing Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. We are so glad you're joining us. As you know, that Cornerstone Television Network, we are on a journey of 21 days of prayer where we're taking each day, we have a specific prayer focus. And today it really ties in when you're listening to Amy's story about really having a heart that mirrors God. We just heard how Amy, that she had to lay down her dream and sacrifice what she really wanted her desire to go onto Broadway and to sing. But when God called her to be a preacher, to be an evangelist and to literally share the gospel with thousands, she was mirroring God's heart. And we have a scripture that goes with that today. And it comes from Psalm 51:10, And it says this, you're probably really familiar with it. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. You know, I know a lot of us have heard this scripture time and time again. Maybe there's been times that you've been praying to God and you've been speaking that over yourself, that God created me a pure heart, you know, renew a right spirit within me. And what I think one of the things, you know, we talk about purpose and we talk about calling. The one thing I heard a while ago that the greatest calling that we have is literally for our lives to mirror after Jesus, for our, eye, for our lives to reflect the heart 
of God. And so today, as you're taking time, as you're meditating on the scripture and you're journeying with us on this 21 days of prayer, we just encourage you today to just seek the heart of the Father and say, God, what are some things that need to be removed out of me? What are some things that you need to do a deep, deep, deep rooted cleaning in my heart that come out of so that I can walk in your fullness. I can walk in your purpose. I can show your glory to people that need it. Because a lot of times, Tom, you know, when I think about when we're pursuing the heart of God, he does call us to sacrifice and to lay down things, maybe, you know, dreams and visions and things that we want to pursue in the world, but so we can do what's on his heart and on his agenda. Yeah, I think of, of David, of all the things that David did, slaying the giant and, and uh, leading the, the, the uh, hosts of Israel to victory and leading as a king. Of all the things that was said about him, the thing that we remember the most and the thing that was probably the most significant, I'm sure, to him is that he was a man after God's own heart. That's what really matters. It matters where we are in that relationship. Are we following after God? Is our heart completely his? Because let me tell you, it's easy to, even after we're saved, to grab your heart back and put yourself back on the throne and start to uh, you know, kind of follow your own way. But David, and he did some real foul ups, let me tell you, and, uh, but he realized that God was where he had to stay. Is that where you are today? Is that where you say, I'm a person after God's own heart. I'm someone who wants to see God glorified in all things. And you can kind of test that when everything doesn't go your way. Are you still following after God? Amy, I think that's a, a key for anyone in ministry, anyone at any stage of their Christian life. Where is my heart? Is it really after God's desires or my own desires? Well, and if you're going to follow God, you're going to have to step out in faith. I mean, when God said Pittsburgh, it wasn't all set up where there was a home for us, a church for us, a leadership. It was, it was nothing. We had to step out in faith, trusting God. And I'll never forget driving uh, to Pittsburgh and we did not have a place to stay. I don't know what we were going to do, like to live. So we have a U-Haul full of furniture and no place to go. And I'll never forget when we got a phone call and we were at West Virginia, we had almost pulled over the Pennsylvania state line and we got a call that said, hey, our friends have this house for you. It's in uh, Squirrel Hill area. So we pull up to this house, five bedrooms, four bathrooms. We had our church offices downstairs and every room, listen to these details, every room matched every piece of furniture that we had brought. Wow. <laughs> God cares about the details, but in order to follow him, you're going to have to step out in faith and you're going to have to make a big, bold move. So maybe you today need to make a big, bold move and you know you've heard from God and he told you something and that word is so strongly impressed in your heart and in your spirit, but maybe fear is holding you back. And I just break that spirit of fear in Jesus name. Just step out and go, just go for it and do what God has asked you. Abraham and Sarah, yeah. what'd they do? They went and they didn't know where they were going and God led them into the promised land. God has a promised land for you today. Ooh, I just feel like you are preaching, you are ministering, <laughs> just dropping so many gems and nuggets in your story. And I just think about when we are called to follow God, man, it is not easy. I know we can all attest about seasons and times where God was just like, take this step out. You have no idea where you're going. You have no idea what's gonna happen. But you know, one thing that I always like to think about, like I'm one of those, like I think one of my love languages, surprises. I love <laughs> to be surprised. And you know, I know God loves to do that. You know, you just heard with Amy's story about when they moved and they didn't know where they're going and a couple like bless them with <laughs> to live in a house in Squirrel Hill and everything matched the furniture. Mm -hmm. God is in the details. Yeah. And sometimes I think we're, you know, we like to be in control. Let's all be honest. It is so scary not to be in control, not to understand what's going to happen, not knowing where you're going to going, but there are seasons and times. And I really believe in this season that God is trying to get all of us to a new place where we consecrate our lives to him, where we fully devote ourselves to him, that we are so surrendered in September that we know God, wherever you're leading me and wherever you're taking me, that I'm going to trust you. I'm going to follow you, even though sometimes it may be dark, but there's light. There's another side at the end of this. And so we want to encourage you today that you just seek the heart of God. You be still and you don't move until you hear his voice, but we know that our God is faithful. We know that our God, he is like, I, there's a new word I've learned of God. It's like a Hebrew. It's El Amath. It means the faithful God. 
He is faithful to us. He is our husband. He is the one that looks after us, that he is surely going to take care of you no matter what the journey looks like. I love that and I still I keep going back to David. He's such a, a lesson for us because we have a lot of where, he, he wrote a lot of the Psalms, about half of them, and he, he's got you know, some of the really high crescendo times, Amy, mm -hmm. where everything's going great, great and he even is standing before, he's like, search me, oh God, know my heart. And it's like, everything's good. And then the verse right before the one we read, you know what he said? He's like, hide your face from my sins. You know, like he knows that he messed up. That's Psalm 51, the, the great psalm of repentance that David had. So, but God is with him no matter what. He's with him no matter what. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to restore. He's ready to create that clean heart. So I just have to ask you once again, have you made that commitment? I hope you have. I hope you've opened the door of your life and said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior, and I'll follow after you. And you know, when, he, when, you, when you do that, he rushes in. The prodigal son's father ran through the town, ran and, and picked him up and said, uh, my son has been restored. My son who was dead is now alive. That's for you today. Your son, you are God's son or daughter. Have you been dead to him? He wants to restore you. He wants to make you alive again. So do that today. Give that, that, that time, uh, give that, take that time of prayer, that time of repentance and say, Lord, I'm yours today. Forgive me, let me walk and follow after you and he will rush out to you, amen. Well, and let's let our lives be an offering to him. Let's offer our, like, like David saying, here's my heart. And many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord will direct his steps. God, here's my life. Here's my little offering. I ask that you take it and that you break it and that you make it a beautiful gift to the world. So today, give your life to Christ. Give your whole heart, your spirit, soul, and body to him and let him write your story. You know, just Amy, as you're saying, like you were just talking, I just really feel like God is saying, just like, this is the season to follow after him because the world is waiting for your story. There are tribulations, there are trials, there's things that you've gone through and you've walked through and the world needs to hear your story because it testifies of his goodness, it testifies of his grace and it testifies of his love, not only for you, but of the whole world. So why don't you go out and share your God story today? We'll see you tomorrow.